Good evening and welcome to Bronx Talk. When you open up your daily news to see what's going on in New York and around the world, whether you read it in an actual newspaper or online, an important part of the experience is seeing the news photos that go a long way to help tell the stories. Tonight we're going to get a look at some amazing news photos taken for the daily news by legendary photographer, the late Michael Schwartz. Michael, who was born and raised in the Bronx on Davidson Avenue, began at the Daily News in 1994 and worked until he died of cancer, unfortunately, at the age of 73 in 2017. One of tonight's guests was his friend, and she brought along a small sampling, a very small sampling, of some of his most incredible photos covering police and crime in the Bronx. Of note, his photos of the 9-11 attack that we will see tonight are part of the nation's history. is stored at the Library of Congress, and he also has a series of photos called Irish Eyes, photos of Belfast that is on permanent display at the Brooklyn Museum. Schwartz's photos have been entered as Pulitzer Prize contenders, and for the record, he won the Society of Salurians Best Spot News Photograph Award in 2007 and the New York Press Club Spot News Awards in 2009 and 2010. Tonight, again, just a small sampling of Michael's vast collection. So, please join me in welcoming a friend of the late photographer, journalist Ardina Seward. Nice to see you, Ardina. Thanks for having me, Gary. And a media consultant and a former Daily News editor and reporter who worked covering news with Michael Schwartz. Goodness, he's been on Bronx Talk so many times over the years. <laughs> many know him as Cappy. It's my friend Bob Capstad. I'm, I'm still waiting for the check. Oh, uh, <laughs> speak to my agent. Okay. Uh, nonetheless, uh, Ardina, let's just start with you. What was your relationship with Michael Schwartz? And you're the one who said, hey, I got all these photos. How did you get the photos that we can show? Michael and I were colleagues in the field. I had worked for WABC Eyewitness News for many, many years. And we, I wouldn't say we collaborated on stories in the field, but we would end up at the same locations, many of which were crime locations, fire scenes, you name it. And Michael and I fought like cats and dogs to the extent where people asked us, are, are you married? No, we weren't married. But we were colleagues in the spirit, and we respected the, each other's work. And Michael lived in the Bronx. I lived in the Bronx at that time. And we had a lot in common, as strange as that may seem. And I just want to well, it correct... it sounds like you do have a lot in common. You're feisty. He was, that's going to come up more than once in this program, that he was feisty. Um, and, and, of course, you really care about the, the journalism and telling the story right. So you do have a lot in common. And I loved his photos. And if I just may correct you, his photos, his Belfast photos, are on permanent display, not in Brooklyn, but in Boston, at ah. Boston College. They well, have the Daily <coughs> News reported that it was at the Brooklyn Museum, so let's give them a ring. No, but go they're, ahead. They're, they're, they're in, there's a separate, not a separate wing, but there is an archive in Boston College dedicated to Belfast and the Troubles in Ireland. And Michael's photos, which he, which he uh, shot over a period of 10 years, are permanently oh, archived in Boston College. Uh, Cappy, you, uh, let's see, did you go in the field with him? Did you, when you were editor at the, at the Daily News, did both you ways. say, go and get me that picture? Or well, that both way, yeah, both ways. Uh, in the field and working as, as an editor, the bureau chief up here, um, Michael was sort of like a, uh, an unofficial reporter. He would call me with story tips. Uh, he would say, hey, I got this cop told me that, uh, all kinds of stuff. And then we'd be at the scene of something, and uh, it, there'd be a crowd, and uh, he'd say, go talk to that guy. He saw it. <laughs> so he gets part of the credit for your illustrious Yeah, he was the un unofficial reporter. reporter uh, I want to ask me. each yeah. of you this, and then we're going to then we're going to open up the archive. Um, so we'll start with you, Cappy. Um, Ardina mentioned it. I know it. I know I did public relations. And when I would go to an event and we'd set up all the, the shots and news people were there and everything, when that was all done, Michael would say, all right, everybody stop. <laughs> And he would redo the whole thing, and then you would see the most gorgeous photos in the newspaper. So the question is, how did his toughness, his attitude, his difficult nature uh, play to create the photographs that we're about to see? And oh. you're going to get the same question. Okay. My, for, for attitude among tabloid photographers, Michael's attitude stood out. <laughs> I will say that. 
<laughs> but I mean, these these street photographers from the news and the post, guys that that I had worked with, these were you know these were guys that were out there to get that photo. They were out there's and guys nothing that nobody could get in the way. There's line. guys still out there today. Dave Hanshu, who got blown 20 feet when the tower collapsed My and broke goodness. a leg. Uh, Todd Mazel, Johnny Rocca. If he Johnny was racing to the scene, and his St. Christopher statue would hide under the dashboard. So, so Ar Ardina, that's the best. Way. Unfortunately, that's the best way for partially a journalist, but a photojournalist to get what he or she needs. You well, had to get all. that picture. Well, you you become, couldn't lose it. Something you know. There's this spirit that takes over when you become fixated on a photo. You get into a zone, and there's nothing, you, wow. you see nothing, you, you have no peripheral vision. Uh -huh. You're just focused on what you have to get. And Michael, one of the greatest Michael Schwartz stories was... <laughs> of many. He oh, yeah. got into a fight with Big Bird. Oh! <laughs> this is a, I'm, I'm telling you, this is a true story. Apparently, he was at, Jim, at a Jim Henson memorial. Yeah. And the characters... The Muppet characters were all lined up. And Michael didn't like the way Big Bird was standing. And Michael... That, that is so typical. This exactly. This Michael. And he wanted to rearrange the, the, the way people... The, he, wanted, he wanted to re re rearrange the photo. So they didn't want him to rearrange it. So Michael got into this fight. And the, the photographer said, you wouldn't believe it. They said, there's Michael standing there arguing, arguing with, with Big Bird, Bird. <laughs> the, the most loving character in, in the world. Um, all right, I would so, love to see a picture of that. Yeah, <laughs> that, we didn't have that photo. It's probably somewhere. It's somewhere. Yeah. I, and it's probably in the, arch, it, probably in the archives that, that I have, of, and I, I will have to try and find it. Let, let's, let's take a look. The, yeah. the first thing we have is 9-11, um, and he was there. I mean... The, the, these are the archival shots of 9-11. Look at that. And so now when people remember what they saw that day, this is what they remember, and they remember it because this is how they saw it in the Daily News. That's a day to remember, I'll tell you. Uh, and, any comments from e either of you on it? I mean, this is who Michael was. Uh, I mean, look, look, at, the, look oh. at the photo. He gets the humanness. Because danger, danger to Michael was irrelevant. He just didn't, he never ran from anything. I, I can't think of a, of a moment in Michael's life where he avoided a dangerous situation. When there was a photo at stake. When there was a photo at stake. He was aware of it, but it never deterred him. We're, we're going to see that in evidence through a lot of these pictures. All right, uh, Rebecca, our um, producer, is doing a great job up there. Now look at, let's leave this up here. So here is a baby who needs resuscitating and the firefighter uh, has his literally um, administering um, mouth, to mouth. mouth to mouth. And what I love about this photo is the hand in front because they're telling Michael, get the heck out of here. Right. But Michael got the picture. Yeah. And imagine again, you open up the newspaper and uh, there it is. Yeah. That's, that's a classic photo among photographers, you know, when we're trying to give mouth-to-mouth -to, -mouth to children coming out of fires. And, uh, but, but here's the thing which we're going to see, and I can't, uh, you know, you try to be there. Listen, Cappy, you, you both know this. You want to be there when the news is happening. And yet, when stuff is really happening, he's really there. <laughs> You know what I mean? The rest of us are like, all right, we're behind the, the thing. Even the reporters are made to stand back. You need to get the photo. Right. That's as simple as it, as it can be. You need to Did, get the photo. Let's look at one more, and then I'm going to ask you, Cappy, okay. if you have any individual memories. What do we got next? Oh, you see, here it is. So here's uh, uh, undercover cops have arrested somebody <coughs> in a building in the Bronx somewhere, right? I mean... How do you be the photographer in the room with them? First of all, you talk about danger. There's guns everywhere. You Half the cops that. in the Bronx knew Mike. <laughs> that's right. You so they you, let him in. That, you yeah. see, that's part of it. Go ahead. You, it, when, when, in a situation like that, you just don't, you cannot think of danger. You cannot think, I'm not supposed to be here. You cannot think, what if? As Cappy says, you just have to get the photo. It's a very singular way of thinking. But the, I, most street photographers, most news photographers, 
have that sense. Yeah. And, and Michael I, I, had I, it I even more keenly. You, you say you can't worry about danger. This is why Gary is not a news photographer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. You guys handle the scene. You cops are well trained. And I have common, you know. But it's 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 a, you know I think it's just mapped in the DNA in the DNA and the wiring of street photographers right. that it's something about. You know, some people say you know you guys are on a suicide mission. It has nothing to do with suicide, and it mm -hmm. has to do with just uh, adrenaline. Can I say you, another word? Your editor. Your editor. Where's the photo? Yeah, that's that right. Too. Do you have any yep. any um, in individual stories that you want to relate, or we just look at more pictures? Let's keep going with the keep pictures. Going with the pictures. You know, It'll come uh, up. again, talking about street photographers. You know, you, uh, you too. Listen, well, we, we've yeah, had you well, on the street, you know, doing ahead, street reporting. Same thing. You know. Here we go. Here's another child. Yeah. There you go. And, and again, the closeness of it, like especially nowadays, everybody's got a camera. And but you and you and I, maybe you guys, but I'm not anywhere near getting. Look, look at the faces. Michael was famous for that. That Michael, uh, when I recall Michael photographing someone, Michael very rarely photographed from a distance. Well, he could Michael have. liked to get right in there up close, and he was. A, Michael was not a big guy. Michael was a skinny guy. Yes, he was. He was slightly built and not tall. But he. It was like he would just expand when he got to a new scene. You, you talked about his relationship with police officers, and you, yeah, of course, cops and firemen. If and, you they, and they, you're saying they love them. Oh, you know, or they tolerate yeah. them? Well, you know what? I think it, I think you, I think it was a mix. Um, they respected him. He That's respected the them. They respected him. Uh, they would, uh, you know, a week or two after the picture was taken, he'd wind up showing up at the station house or the firehouse and giving them prints, which cops loved. Right. Uh, and it was a working, there is a working relationship with the media and, and cops and firefighters. Because if you want to get that photo, they could certainly have you not be there. Yeah. But he was also arrested six times. So really? Michael was arrested six times. I didn't know that. <laughs> For the getting in the way? Career. For getting in the way because he wasn't when it went Well, that too. <laughs> All right, let's see I the next one. That. I love that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, this this picture I absolutely love. Oh, great. This I love. Great shot. So here's two guys being arrested, and one of them still has a brick. Michael got a photograph of something that the police didn't know. Wait right? a minute. Is this. I this, you or sure is this is in Ireland? Could it be Ireland? I don't this know. Kids like, this, looks I think, like, this is Ireland. Yeah. That is Ireland. That's wow. not these are kids still, getting ready to throw, but still, but, throw these. But That's still, Ireland. they're being yeah. arrested, and Michael's got a picture no. of something the police didn't know. Because he had this that. unique well, the guy on the way. right looks like he's... I don't, think, I don't see the cuffs. I think no. these kids were he's, ready to chuck these uh, wow. bricks. So he was right there in the danger. Because yeah. Michael always saw something. Michael saw beyond the obvious. That was... Part of his unique vision. He had this way, I mean, you could look at a wide shot, and Michael would find that little section the of germ. that wide shot. Put that, that photo up again. I, 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 just, I just love that. If we could put that photo up again. I, I just love that photo. Isn't that, isn't that something? He, he's there either behind the scene when stuff is happening. And he's got this, look at the photo. The brick is the biggest thing in the photo. The you framing, know, a, even when it's framed. You know, a lot of photographers will, t street photographers will tell, and, and I, l I learned this from cops and they may have too. What's out of the ordinary in this picture? What is out ah. of the ordinary? What, what makes it an, a, a, what, a what, scene? What's different? What's, what's going on here? What, what's not normal here? The right. irony of it. And you focus on that. Right, let's do uh, one, uno mas, one more uh, photograph. We have a bunch left. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't mean to laugh. Okay. First of all, we'd all like to know how the fire I, uh, uh, right. ambulance, I guess that is. Did they it. slap them with a summons? <laughs> yeah, really. Or did, was there an accident? That is just. And again, yeah. um, everybody's cleared away. Somehow he might not have been there when it happened, but he had to get his car there so that he could get out and take the photo? He would, if Michael would, would either push his way in or he would find a vantage point where others couldn't find it. I have been, I have been at, at crime scenes where all the photographers are behind and we have a wide shot 
And somewhere in the bottom of that wide shot, you'd see Michael Schwartz. Like, you'd say, how did he get there? How did he get there? You, you know, for this, I, I don't know. It, it looked a little bit like the Bruckner to me. Um, I, I don't really know. But that's a situation where he might have parked somewhere in the neighborhood and then ran across carrying a, ba a camera bag and cameras and everything else. A million right? times. Yeah. I've seen him do it a million times. And yeah. he would just... He, Be the guy. Talk about walking the extra mile. He would go the extra two miles to get the photo. You, you know, um, the, the, the respect that we all have, I have too, even though it made me uncomfortable as a promotions person to try and get stuff done. But I was like, oh, goodness, here he is. And I knew that we were going to, you know, it was gonna, we we're going to do what we do, but then he's going to make us redo it till he gets the shot he wants. All right, let's uh, show another one. Oh, this I love. This is a plane that landed on the Major Deacon. I remember that one. I, it was yep. just north of Van Cortland Park, I think. Yeah, somewhere it was. Up there. Yep. And again, same kind of thing. That was, of course, when we had uh, when we had snow in New York. But but again, look at that photograph. Oh, yeah. And do you remember that? I, I remember that. that. I, I can actually remember. see it in the distance yeah. from my window. I have an apartment on an upper floor, yeah. and we could see in the distance. I was like, wait a minute, that landed on. Me. <laughs> that's a yeah. tremendous. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Yeah. You that's didn't incredible. know that that had happened. I don't remember that one. Uh, maybe you didn't read the Daily News enough. <laughs> there you uh, go. <laughs> So let's do another. This is this. We got to hold this up. This is my favorite photograph. So here's a guy ready to jump off a roof, right? And not only, I mean, because most of us would get a photograph from the street and looking up, and it would be incredible. He got across the street into a building across the street yeah. and went on a roof. To, I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. And probably bribed the super from that building. Yeah. You he, think that's what he did? Yeah, he probably, yeah. he probably told the super. Annoying Michael. Give you 20 Michael bucks, say, open the door yeah, for yeah. me. I'll, 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 Look give at you, this. I'll give you 10 bucks. Let me up on the roof. Let me up on the roof. Look, okay. This to me is a, a news photograph for the ages. Not, only, yes, I, I realize you got the picture at the moment this man was going to jump and the police were being very careful about it. But the van, you talked about vantage point. That is just... Yeah. Startling. And I wouldn't be surprised if those cops were ticked off. <laughs> like, that he was. Say, what are you trying to do? Make this guy jump? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that he, he made made him more famous. He than wouldn't he... care. Come on. Well, better he, shot. I, listen, <laughs> maybe it's a better shot, but I'd like to think. Actually, I think there's a later photograph. There we is don't a have shot. It. I don't think, I think it's of in the this guy series. coming back off the. Off there was the... a guy dropping off a bridge. In... Oh my goodness. I don't think it's in this series though. I didn't. I didn't. I haven't seen it. Now, you have a lot of his photos, right? I have. I, I've, I, I've stopped counting. I mean, I must have Hundreds? at least uh, thousands. Thousands? I must have at least, I would say, two, three thousand did, negatives. I, I don't and know if you need to go in there. Did she be, bequeath them to you in some form, or you I just am, got them? Basically, I, I am the... The archivist? Keeper of the, the flame. The keeper of the flame. I basically inherited wow. his, his, yeah. his let, wealth let of his photos. Let me say that um, there, if you go on Google and type in Michael Schwartz, I think photographer or photography, his website does is still website. up and you can see a whole bunch yeah. of photos. I, 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 have to I tell recommend, you, please do it. I have to yeah. tell you, I did look at that website before the show. I wanted to see more. <laughs> Yeah. I the, felt that there were some photos, but I said there's a, a much larger archive. They're in my house. Ah, uh, there you yeah. go. So let's go. We'll go have dinner at uh, yeah. Ardina's. This is another I photo. I love this shot. He loved this. He gave me the framed version of this. Really? I have it on my wall. He loved this. Perfect. It's just Perfect. amazing. And so the guys are walking out of the precinct, and so that's probably how he had his trousers throughout the, the, the would, whole process. I wouldn't be surprised if the cops were in on it, too. Oh, that, see, you know too much. That's what uh, Bob Capstad has been. But what a great photograph. Totally. And, and yeah. the other thing in terms of the Bronx, capturing an era, capturing a, a style of life. I mean, this, there's so much in there to see. Do we know what precinct it is? I don't know if I can. I'm looking yeah. at the steps. I'd say maybe the... 4 down on, uh, uh, by uh, the Mott Haven, Haven houses. Mm. Yeah. Maybe. But but just just again, you you got to be the guy or, or woman, of course, who's there to take that picture. I mean, it happened, okay, but somebody has to be there at that moment to say maybe something's going to happen. 
Well, a lot of photography is, is intuitive and it's anticipation. But again, a lot of it is intuitive where you just, you, you freeze and something, inter something inside you anticipates the moment where you just you realize that. that that's realize a good point too, is the anticipation. Kathy, you take a lot of pictures. We've featured yeah. you a number of times on the Bronx Buzz. Yeah. Um, your, your thing is more portraits, but you do tend, I, I've seen you at Bronx street fairs and, and, and you know, you I, archive them beautifully. I, I do a lot of, I've been doing a lot of street photography. Um, obviously like uh, the great French photographer, Cartier Bresson, talked about catching the moment. And that's what a lot of photographers also try to do. You have to be prepared for that instant. Like, to keep your camera, you gotta have your camera ready, you've gotta see something in a split second maybe, because after that the picture it just doesn't work. Here, I don't know if you can answer this question. From the years of working with Michael and knowing Michael, did you learn something from that, that you, even subliminally, that you say, you know, that's how I should get this far? Yeah, yeah. well, seeing his stuff. Seeing his stuff yeah. and knowing what, knowing what he could do. If I had to ask for a particular photographer for a particular job, I'd know that if this was street, I'd want Michael on it. Wow. And, did you, and you requested that? I mean, yeah, I'd say, listen, you know, can you get me Schwartz? Get, <laughs> get that me sounds Schwartz. like a movie. Get me Schwartz. <laughs> wanna, get me Schwartz. That's the movie. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's May see. the Schwartz be with you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, go ahead. Let's see what's next. Oh, okay. Oh. So... Now, uh, this was a memorable one. I was yes. there. <laughs> you were there. Talk, talk a little bit about, obviously, it's um, uh, Mother Teresa and, and okay. Princess uh, Diana. The phone rings in the Bronx Bureau. It's a police captain who's handling Princess Di's security. He's a friend. He says, Cappy, get down, get down to the nuns. Princess Di's coming there. So, okay, so boom. I call a photo desk. I said, get Schwartz. Get, get Schwartz. Schwartz. And I, tra I, I tear, tear down there, and uh, Mike just got, got this perfect shot. It, it is the perfect shot, number one, especially not only are they there, she's got her hand up, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, again, the, the, the rest of us are standing outside the lines and trying to get a good shot. He's right there. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I have Keep to- Keep going. I, I have to do my little thing. That night, driving home on the brook, I was saying, Mother Teresa, and I, I had covered oh, her. I thought you were going to use a bad word. Okay. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I said, <laughs> and I had been, I'd covered her. She be, was up for the week to ordain some nuns, and I, I'm driving home. Saying, Who does she remind me of? She, Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, I, I guess it's fair, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> but, but that, uh, okay, well, you're looking at the heavens for lightning now, or? Hey, do right, do no, we want to just show that smart. again and, and see if Kathy's okay. uh, remembrance is correct? Yes. All right, But anyway. uh, there you go. So this was, do you remember where in the Bronx this was? Uh, the, uh, the Sisters of Charity's place is right behind the Mott Haven houses, just off um, Third Avenue. Mm -hmm. It's just below the Mott Haven house, uh, just behind the Mott Haven houses. And after Princess Di left, uh, everybody figured, oh, she, Mother Teresa will go back in. She stayed, she waited into the crowd of all these mothers with their kids. And, and she, She's holding babies wow. and kissing them. I, you know, I'm sure there are more of Michael's photos that have pictures of those. That would... Uh, I mean, we could be Love here to all see night. what he got. He the, may have had to rush off to get the photos in for deadline too. The, so the other knows. thing that which you told me when we when we met and we started talking about doing this show is that you know the theme would be police and cop photos, which is largely what we've done. But there's a whole string of photos of real life. Of uh, there's one which actually we don't have of of a, of a kid in the in the spray off a hydrant, which is kind of a famous photo. Um, and I'm going to show one here that's actually going to be our last photo. But he had he had a feel for that too. Sure, because right. Michael a, a lot a lot of Michael's photos <laughs> was a way of him processing his own childhood and his own angst. Not to sound too. You know, dramatic. Too dramatic. But there was no separation between Michael Schwartz and the camera. 
the camera was an extension of Michael. Yep. They and, were and one here, unit. Here's, here's the photo. I put that back up. We definitely want to see that again. Um, this, to me, um, really captures Bronx life. And, and the thing about it is that they're in the middle of the street. It's not like uh, when I oh, played I Scully, oh, we were in the in the playground. Yeah. They're in the middle of the street, and they drew their little Scully board. And, and look at the intensity that they're all three. I mean, it's just, it captures life. And what Ardina said about his understanding of life, I don't want to limit it to his love for the camera. He clearly understood the Bronx and the streets of the Bronx. Cappy, you were going to say something about that? Uh, kid photos. I mean, kid photos. They're, you know, uh, they're, so, they're so great to find kids in their own natural, doing their natural thing. And to capture that. Well, that, that photograph That's um, just certainly... Done. That captures it. Um, yep. in, in the time that we have left, Cappy, let's just talk about, um, you know, what should the audience get out of this? I mean, what, what, what do you see? That, 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 that it's possible to do great work even if you don't have a pleasant attitude? I would, <laughs> I would, I would say learn to see. Uh -huh. Just learn to see around you. Be aware. Don't just walk down a street like you're going someplace without... Listen, I, I, you and I are friends for a long yeah. time, and I see your Facebook pictures. You wake up in the morning, and you walk down to the shoreline where you live near in Brooklyn, and you take gorgeous photos, because that because you see, right? That's, yeah. Um, you want to summarize for us? What, what are we going to do with these? We're going to open a museum, probably. I'm open for <coughs> options. You know, there's so many photos that we could do a whole separate... Uh, do another show. Do a whole separate show. And also, uh, my dream is to somehow have the police photos archived with NYPD where they can be shown in a permanent collection. Ah. I would love to do that. The, the Belfast photos... Museum still, of the City of New York Museum or something. Museum of the City like. of New York. I mean, yeah. the Belfast photos That's we're still sorting through and we're going to ship, well, not ship, uh, hopefully hand carry a bunch of Gee, them I, I wonder, if, Cappy, you would know better than I, if at police, one police plaza, there's like a, a, a space that could be. There's a always a, I'm, I'm pretty sure there, there's always an ex exhibition wow. space. All right, let's get our the, Dina uh, down there, there with there's Michael. The ticket. There's Listen, the ticket. this has been a joy. Uh, we want to um, thank his family, of course, and, and wish them well. And, and we miss him. As tough as he was, we want more. <laughs> the, the world is still going on, and we would love Michael to be taking pictures. Ardina Seward, thank you so much. Thank you for having and me. And Cappy, you'll still be my friend after this, I hope. As always. All right, all right, very good. Listen, we want to thank our producer is Rebecca Hemick. Our director is Nick Marrero. We have a cast of thousands around us in the studio and in the control room. And uh, next week, you know what's going to happen? We'll be back. We'll see you then. Good night.